Hey YouTube, this is Gregory Nelson. Welcome to What Did I Just Watch, episode eight. In this YouTube series, I introduce my favorite people to my favorite moments in professional wrestling. We cover moments that go to the absolute limit and discuss how they create drama, tell a story, and keep those viewers wanting more. Before we get into today's interview, please take a moment to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe, and if you really want to go that extra mile, you'll click that bell icon so you never miss an episode. My guest today is my old college pal, Nani Swaminathan. Nani and I were part of the theater group together in college, we're both huge nerds, and she's just one of my favorite people ever. Her mom even gave me a John Cena action figure for my birthday one year, and I absolutely lost my shit. I'm going to give Nani 60 seconds to cut a little promo and tell you a little bit about herself. Nani, the floor is yours. Hello, my name is Nani. Uh, Greg and I go way, 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 way back. Further back than sometimes I care to admit. Um, I am a social worker. I'm a therapist. I'm a dog parent and a cat parent. I am married and I spend my days sitting at this exact desk working remotely from home forever and ever in a pandemic. But I'm so, so excited to be here. Well, Nani, if it weren't for this pandemic, when would have we caught up? Seriously. Yeah, that's true. Now, Nani, my first question for you is, as far as you can remember, what was your first exposure to pro wrestling? Oh, God. Um, I had a stretch Armstrong uh, when I was like like five or six years old and um, my my sister and I used to fight over it and I just remember I think like I didn't want her to play with it so I cut the arms off and I like oozed all the goo out of it um, and then after that I sort of didn't really watch a lot of wrestling, but my, my cousin was super into wrestling. And so we used to buy him a bunch of stuff. And then I do have still from middle school, my old skateboard with the vinyl underneath of the rock. Um, I still have that in my home. Do you have access to that? I do. We need, if you can get a photo for this episode of that skateboard, it's literally on the ground right right over there. If I am giving you permission to get up from your chair to go oh get it. Oh my god. Oh, this is so embarrassing. Not for me. Well, for you it's probably deeply exciting. Yes. I mean, this is I like, am so excited right now. This was like back in the day, Walmart, the stuff that you like cried for in the aisles this was what i cried for i am look so happy right now do we look like twins oh my god i think we have our thumbnail for the video yeah right there yeah so this we i still have um and i'm never ever giving it up in a million years oh my god don't get Mount that on a wall somewhere. Get I it know, off the like, floor. Talk about putting it behind me all the time. And Brilliant. I just wonder what Brilliant. my parents might think of that. That is so great. I am so happy right now. So before we get into today's match, there's one or two things I want to get into with Nani. As I mentioned before, we're both huge nerds, especially for Star Wars. And not only did I want a Star Wars fan on this show... I wanted a Mandalorian fan on this show. Let's get into Mandalorian real quick. You see, you see my child over my shoulder? Oh my God. Show me the baby. You just have, you just keep providing all these excellent toys to this episode that are just making me mark out. Oh. I'm just a nerd. I'm just a, a giant nerd trying to get through life as an adult. I think it's our generation. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they and just... it helps that my mom fostered a love of like just having a bunch of nerdy toys. Like she bought you your first John, like your John Cena, and she's so proud of of the the joy she was able to bring people. Her favorite thing to do is to buy toys for adults. So, what a I mean, legend! Here, here we are, 
Uh, yeah. I'm truly her child. Now, um, Mandalorian, it's this spaghetti Western style of, you know, television show, but in a Star Wars universe. And so good. it's absolutely brilliant. Well, Everything. Every, every episode, I, I just like, I spend the like five minutes after just staring at the screen like this. <laughs> Same here. Every week it absolutely delivers and it's some of the best Star Wars content. Oh, yeah. Out there. Yeah. And it's nice to see characters that that don't get a lot of like, m m you know, silver screen time um, being brought to life as these like live action people. They're not cartoons. They're 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 live action. They're characters with multi dimensions. And it's nice that like more people are getting to see those characters and not just like. Uh, you know, us kids who grew up watching these these like cartoons who read the comic books and the books and so it's nice to share that with my nieces and my my friends who don't know as much about the universe. Now I think we can agree that one thing Star Wars fans really love is long-term storytelling. Yeah. It's what's keeping us involved over the years and they keep writing new characters into these stories that we already love. Like Ahsoka Tano is just absolutely brilliant. But so many Star Wars fans don't even know she exists because they don't watch the Clone Wars. Right. And, you know, I'm going to segue this into what we're talking about today because wrestling fans love long-term storytelling and we rarely get it. Going from Star Wars into the world of pro wrestling, WWE superstar Sasha Banks recently was featured on an episode of The Mandalorian. And I don't know, but I think she's going to be back for more. I hope so. I hope so too, because after you watch this match, you're going to want to know everything about her. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I might have, I might have done a little research after I watched her on the show, trying to figure out like who is this woman. She is from our area. I did, yeah, and I didn't know that. I I learned a lot of really cool stuff about her. Um, that I'm just, it's just exciting. Like, and it's also just like exciting to see a woman of color on that screen. Um, just like being a badass. Such a badass. I love her. Badass. So Sasha Banks is the first wrestler to appear in the Star Wars canon. And Sasha Banks is no stranger to being the first woman to do something. She's also one of the first women to headline a WWE pay-per-view. And Nani, with you just being my friend, you've taught me so much about social justice, progressive change. And I think I'm a much better person just for having you in my life. And here's the thing, women's rights have always been a difficult step in professional wrestling. There's been a lot of sexism. There's been a lot of objectifying. And for the longest time, that's how women were viewed on wrestling programming as more or less a sideshow. And what I'm about to show you today, Nani, is no sideshow. This is the absolute best, two of the absolute best in the world. As the world continues to change, Women in pro wrestling stopped being looked at as a sideshow and started being given a proper platform in WWE. And that really brings us to the match we're covering today. Sasha Banks versus Bayley in a 30-minute Iron Man match for the NXT Women's Championship from NXT TakeOver Respect. This was the first women's match ever to headline a WWE pay-per-view, and it 100% earns that slot. Now, I didn't give Nani anything to watch for prep for this episode because I just want to get into it and see your fresh reactions. I'm going to paint a small picture for you though. Two months prior to this match, Bailey won the NXT Women's Championship from Sasha Banks in an absolute classic. Go back and watch it. It's ridiculous. Sasha challenged Bailey to a rematch, which was graciously accepted, but Commissioner William Regal decided to raise the stakes announcing that for the first time ever, a women's match would main event a pay-per-view in a 30-minute Ironman match. Now, I feel like we don't need to get into how stupid 
an Iron Man match, not an Iron Woman match for the women's championship sounds. I just needed to say it once. It's obvious. It sounds dumb. We're going to move on. <laughs> now, the rules of an Iron Man match are to gain as many victories within a 30-minute time limit. This can be pinfall, submission, disqualification, or countout. One thing I'll get into is an NXT crowd is absolutely insane, and they 100% carry this match. It is ridiculous. Nani, I'm actually going to ask that you take a little note section just based off of all the chants going on in this match because it's insane. It's going to blow you off your feet. I'm ready. I love it. That being said, I think we're ready to get into this match. If you want the full experience, go watch this match right now. If we're friends in real life, hit me up. I'll let you borrow my WWE Network info and you won't be left out. We'll be back in a bit to see what Nani has to say. And we are back. Nani, what were your opening thoughts on what we just watched? Oh my God. Uh, I don't even know if I have enough words in my vocabulary to describe what I just watched. Um, at one point, I was like chewing on my nails. Um, at another point, I was like wanting to watch it, but then not really. So I think I was sort of like peeping a little through my, my uh, little... That was wild. That was wild. They know how to get the job done in NXT. And I think for some reason I went in thinking that that Sasha Banks was going to win. That's a little bit of my fault because for our little prep session beforehand, we really only got into Sasha Banks, but we didn't really get into Bailey. And but I think I appreciate that. I think I I all the way up until the end was waiting for something to happen and it didn't happen and i the the twist was was good for me um because i definitely went in with an assumption that was not accurate um but that was that was great yeah let's let's break it down let's talk about these entrances to begin with sasha comes down full of confidence even when this started she was backstage in your first glimpse of her. I'm pretty sure you said something along the lines of, I'm in love with her. I was like, I th I'm in love with her and she hasn't done anything yet. She's just like standing there with like a, a grin on her face. And she I was like, yeah, she's got it. I, I, I've got her. Like, she has this presence that reminds me a lot of you, actually. This, you know, boss presence that I just love. She's just so cool. Like her, even, even in watching her lose, like she she was upset about that but like what a gracious loser to oh. to then like get back up and and smile and and be present like that like what a just her presence is amazing it is i love her so much so at ringside we see stephanie mcmahon lita becky lynch and charlotte flair all of them are there showing their support for this match now nani i would like you to describe bailey's entrance if I, if I was like 14 years old with my side ponytail um, and like a handmade superhero costume with a cape, that would be like my ideal entrance. And it's like she, she like walked out of a child's imagination as like their imaginary best friend slash superhero sidekick. Like just she just came in and just like owned the house well she has it all she has that music she has the tube men she has her number one fan yeah, izzy at ringside and they all come into play and i just absolutely love her character i forgot about the tube men oh my god oh my god she and like the look at her face when she makes them rise up she's just so confident i appreciate like like the fact that what makes her so likable is that like her fans that she acknowledges are like these young, excited girls. She relates to 
a very similar audience that John Cena relates to. Yeah. It's like the, it's like the, the power that exists in all children. And she appeals to that. She appeals to the power in kids. So here we are, 30 minutes. Most victories within the time limit is the winner and NXT Women's Champion. Before the match even starts, we have chance of... What uh, did you write down? What did you write down, Nandi? In my tiny notebook, <laughs> I wrote down women's wrestling. This is awesome. And you deserve it. And NXT. All of it. They definitely deserve that slot. It was awesome. Women's wrestling, the fact that they just chant that shows that it deserves to be on a higher platform. Yeah. They can do it just as good as the guys. And this match proved that they can do it better than the guys. And I also have a special place in my heart for the NXT chant. Because what brand is so fucking good that you chant the name of the brand? I just love that chant. It's so magical. The bell rings, and for the first 60 seconds of the match, both competitors just stare each other down as these chants continue to ring in. And then the two just have an absolute grapple fest, constantly going for quick pinfall attempts throughout the first five minutes of this match. Yeah, I think someone who doesn't know the story coming in, you don't need to. They tell you everything in that, in that minute of staring at each other. You don't need to know anything else about them. You don't need to know backstory. You don't need to know who's watching. You just need to know that these two athletes are going are, are gonna to fight their, their hardest to make sure that they're the one who wins. You just, you just know that that's what's going to happen, and it doesn't matter what the story is. Well, the crowd really helps drive some of that narrative, too, because, I mean, you want to know why this crowd cares so much. And for sure, like, watching it, it's hard to not care so much about Bailey because her dad's there. Like, it's, it's hard to not see her humanity and to, to want her to, to win. Um, and I think for me... It, I don't know that it mattered so much what like the background was or that she was the reigning champ or any of that. I think just watching uh, two athletes who are like, they're so good at what they do and neither one of them wants to lose. And you can see how badly they both want it. Absolutely, Nani. You hit it right on the head. Another thing I want to bring up, you mentioned, you know, not knowing much about the championship being on the line. This match didn't even need the championship. Yeah. Like, you care so much immediately just from all this drama in the first five minutes yeah. that you forget that there's a championship on the line. You care more about who the better woman is. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, like, you see the belt, but once... But once the, the cape comes off and the belt goes down, it doesn't really matter. Because mm -hmm. for, for Bailey, it's not about defending the belt. She has a certain, she has just like a story that she tells. And it doesn't matter if she has the belt or not. The story doesn't go away. I think her story is having a fan base that she doesn't want to let down. Oh, she cares so much about them. Like she hugs really? her fans. She hugs her fans. She hugs her fans. It's amazing. <laughs> oh my God. The two continue to wrestle back and forth and eventually reach a stalemate, which is followed by yes chants from the crowd. And then next we see an arm drag off the top rope and it plays into this whole thing of Sasha trying to hit her finisher on Bailey. Bailey tries to hit her finisher on Sasha. And again, the two stalemate. After this, Bailey reaches out for help help Sasha to her feet. Both of them go to embrace, and then Sasha just whips Bailey's head to the mat. I, I'm not gonna lie. There's a certain very small part of me that took a lot of satisfaction in watching that play out. But I'm a nice person. And I have to say, there's always just that like teeny tiny part of us that's like, yeah, that was like 
kind of great. That was kind of great. I mean, Bailey, you let your guard down like that, you got what you got coming to you. But that's the thing, right? She's just so, uh, she's so good. Like, she's just good. And that's the brand that she represents. It's just goodness and warmth and, like, children, children. I think and- her... I think her brand represents something we don't have enough of in this world. Well, and then we have the Sasha Bankses of the world who just, there was a moment of weakness, a moment of like, you know what? Uh, maybe we can get through this match together and like no hard feelings. And Sasha just took that tiny window of opportunity and was like, you know what? Um, nah. Nah, I'm good. Nah, I'm good. I think I'm gonna win. Yeah. After a quick brawl outside the ring, Sasha goes for a pinfall with her feet on the ropes. This leads to some hilarious words between Sasha and the referee. She knows she's not supposed to cheat, and the ref is supposed to do his job. Because of this, Sasha is able to distract the referee long enough to get an eye poke in on Bailey, followed by a roll-up to score the first pinfall of the match. Now, as the match continues, both of them fight back and forth in the corner of the ring, and this results in Sasha jumping off the second rope. Bailey catches her in mid-flight and delivers her finisher, the Bailey to Belly, securing her first pinfall of the match. Now, your reaction when it became a tie again was absolutely brilliant. Do you remember what I did? I don't even remember. You could not handle it. That's all I could remember. <laughs> I was definitely, like, the, throughout the entire thing, I was definitely, um, like, on the edge of my seat. With 18 minutes left, the score is tied one to one. Sasha exits the ring and Bailey goes for a drop kick. Sasha catches her legs and swings her around, not just directly into the ring steps, but directly in front of her number one fan. That was horrible. That poor child. Next, we see my absolute favorite part of the match. Victories in an Iron Woman match don't only come from pinfalls, but they can come from submission, disqualification, or count out. Sasha takes Bailey, walks her up the ramp, and throws her directly into the video screen. But now, on the way back, Sasha snatches Izzy's bow from her head, gets in the ring, and taunts the shit out of this child. I loved this. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I mean, my heart was breaking a little bit. Was it absolutely cruel and totally unnecessary? Yes. Was it like totally on on character? Also, (laughs) and I won't. I mean, I will say like the first thought I had when she threw her into the to the video screen was just like, oh my god, that must have been so expensive. (laughs) She just broke such an expensive giant TV, and then she taunted a child, and that's like that's like where villainy becomes the greatest part of the character. I think the real icing on the cake is that Izzy breaks down in tears as Bailey is counted out, giving Sasha a two to one lead. Yeah, that's rough. Absolutely brilliant storytelling. I love it. So the referee begins to make a second 10 count. Bailey makes it back into the ring in time. Sasha really has the advantage here, but Bailey has the support of the NXT crowd. Sasha gets Bailey locked in this beautiful, beautiful, and I say beautiful because this move never looks this good. Sasha gets Bailey locked in a beautiful looking Boston Crab. Bailey struggling, crawling towards the ropes, and Sasha just starts stomping on her. You don't see this. You don't see this ever. And I just absolutely love it. And you can see like this anguish and this pain in her face while she's reaching for that rope. And you see the, like, unfiltered rage in Sasha's face where she's just like, no, you're not getting to that rope. And I will stomp on you if I have to keep you from it. Sasha goes for the submission hold again. But Bailey counters, rolling Sasha up and securing a pinfall, tying the score two to two with 12 minutes left on the clock. Nani, after every single pinfall, 
your stress as far as the clock counting down more and more goes was a sight to see. I was like, there's still this much time. I think after the first one, I was like, wait, we're only 11 minutes in? Yeah. I felt like I watched an entire feature length movie in 30 minutes. And this is the first time in the match where Bailey starts to build some real momentum. She's hitting elbows in the corner, even a flying elbow off the top rope. And then next we see some interesting back and forth with this move called the Tree of Woe. Bailey hangs up Sasha from the corner ring post from her legs and just continues to deliver blows. Eventually, Sasha gets Bailey in this same exact position. However, when Sasha winds up trying to dive towards Bailey, she dives through the ring ropes, hitting her shoulder on the ring post, and falls out of the ring. Bailey joins Sasha outside the ring and drags her over to the steps and just starts smacking her hand multiple times on the ring steps. Stuff with the hands is nothing you really see in professional wrestling, but I love how they make it work. Like, I mean, it's I, cringeworthy. I'm not a like coordinated person, but I've definitely like banged my hand on like the corner of a table or the counter. And the level of pain in, in just like a, a, a casual afternoon walking around my home versus like the amount of cardio they did and then to like get your hand repeatedly smashed into a set of metal stairs, I'm all set. Well, Nani, you mentioned earlier in this interview that you and your sister fought over toys over the years. Oh, yeah. You know, a, f a finger or two must have been bent back at that point. I mean, totally. We had to come up with, like, ground rules where we, we like, don't pull hair. I was a biter. We had to, like, come up with some rules around biting. But the thing that's so cool to me is to watch, like, th they're willing to break up. They're willing to give some space for recovery because nobody wants a cheap win. No. So I think it's it's cool to watch them sort of take a step back catch their breath because god knows like they need to try and sort of get whatever energy reserves they possibly can to be able to finish yeah i gotta say a hand injury that's that's very hard to come back from it's next level totally after repeatedly smashing sasha's hand into the ring steps Bailey repositions the steps and tries delivering a flying clothesline to sasha which she hits but then right after that, Bailey tries to get Sasha back in the ring, and Sasha shoves Bailey right back into the ring steps. It's just a beautiful back and forth. With six minutes remaining, both women are sitting outside the ring, tied at two pinfalls apiece. Sasha goes back into the ring. As Bailey makes it to her feet, Sasha goes for a suicide dive to the outside. Bailey catches her again mid flight and gives her another Bailey to belly, this time directly on the floor. That was fantastic. And speaking of fantastic, the crowd immediately breaks into a holy shit chant. Yeah, that was great. I wrote that down. Both women get back into the ring, and we hear one of the most powerful chants that we hear throughout the entire match, Iron Woman. The next part of this match is another favorite spot of mine. Sasha is on the second rope. Her and Bailey are fighting back and forth, and Bailey winds up running up and delivers a Bailey to belly off the second rope. However, Bailey, with all the momentum in the world, rolls over Sasha, but she rolls her over a little bit too much, allowing Sasha's foot to catch on the bottom rope, stopping the pinfall. I definitely had to rewatch that. That replay was, was helpful because I was sort of like, what just happened? What just happened? He hit the mat three times. There's no bell. What's going on? I loved it. And it was Bailey's own momentum that got it over. Normally with that spot, you'll see someone, you know, put their leg on the rope with their own strength. But no, that was Bailey's wrongdoing. Three minutes left on the clock. Bailey gets Sasha up on the second rope, looking to hit a reverse Hurricane Rana. Bailey hits the move to perfection, but Sasha lands on her feet. Bailey turns around and runs right into her own finisher, the Bailey to belly. After a quick two count, Sasha rolls Bailey right into the bank statement. Two minutes left, Sasha has the bank statement locked in in the middle of the ring, 
At one moment, you think Bailey's going to reverse it, but Sasha locks the bank statement right back in. 60 seconds left. In dire desperation, Bailey bends the fingers of Sasha Banks back, slamming them into the ring. And yes, with 30 seconds left, Sasha attempts the bank statement one more time, but Bailey reverses into her own submission hold. Nani, where were you at the point of 30 seconds left in this match? I don't know, somewhere between like wanting to crawl under a rock and also not being able to look away. But I think the thing that I was so hyper focused on is like when she locked her in, the, the amount of damage that was probably done to her hand and the fact that she was able to get her into the bank statement, not once, but twice. So much respect. Now, Sasha has her arms wrenched, her fingers being bent back. Ten seconds to go, and Bailey just starts stomping on Sasha's skull. With three seconds left on the timer, Sasha submits. And as the clock hits zero, Bailey's score goes from two pinfalls to three pinfalls. And the crowd absolutely loses it. Three seconds. She couldn't hang on for three seconds. I, I wanted overtime. I for sure wanted overtime. And I knew, right, like, it, in, it wasn't going to happen. But I was definitely like, come on, Sasha. And I never thought I'd be, like, truly and deeply from, from the very depths of my stomach rooting for the villain. That's an NXT crowd, too. A lot of the fans root for the villains because the villains are such great storytellers. Oh, she's fantastic. And I'll tell you this, Nani, if you want overtime, go watch Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels from WrestleMania 12. You will shit yourself. I'm going to go write this in my tiny notebook. <laughs> now, the post-match, I absolutely adore. It is such a way to close a story. You get this huge celebration. The crowd is going insane. You have the entire NXT roster up on the ramp clapping for both Bailey and Sasha for putting on the first ever women's pay-per-view main event. Yeah, that was, that was pretty amazing to see. I loved it. Each of the women are given ceremonial flowers. This is a very specific custom that comes from Japan. Normally after a big marquee match like this, regardless of who the winner is, both competitors receive a bouquet of flowers after the match. And you know, who else to give him these bouquet of flowers than Triple H? The man is just like... If, if like a boulder came to life as a human person, it would be him. But like with significantly more personality. A great thing about him, he's spent less and less time away from the ring over the years and has fallen more into this executive role. And he really knows how to book wrestling senile vince mcmahon is on his way out and i feel like triple h's style of wrestling is the future it's yeah. where we're going i would love to see stuff like this every single week on television but i only see stuff like this three or four times a year stuff mm -hmm. this good stuff this worth talking about i mean when you see sasha like just collapse at at his feet it's not like I'm so sorry that I couldn't win it's just it's like pure exhaustion it's, it's not shame it's not embarrassment it's just like I fought so hard she just fought a little bit better than I did it's not even a win or lose thing either it's a I just had the best match of my career yeah, and, and the fact that she can get up and she can stand there with a, with a smile on her face and she can face the ring and watch Bailey get her flowers and get her accolades and get her belt, that's, that's clear, right? There's no animosity. It's just you fought a little better than I did and, like, respect. Like, I can, I can respect you and I can walk out of here with my head held high. Nani, that being said... Um... Do you want to remind our viewers what the name of this pay-per-view was? Oh, God. Iron Woman. Respect. Oh, it was respect. It was respect. 
Oh, but Iron God. Woman. I will take Iron Woman. I'm going to call it that from now both on. Both of these women freaking delivered that. in this match. Respect. Mad respect. So good. That being said, do you have any final thoughts? I mean, I mean, for a send-off match, I don't think Sasha Banks could have asked for anyone better to fight. And I think for Bailey to, to get to keep her belt um, and also probably fight one of the best matches she'll ever fight. I thought that was pretty, pretty, I think they did it. I think they managed to, to tell that story and they did it well. 100% girl. <laughs> um, I think that's going to wrap it up for us today. Seriously. Thank you so much for doing this. This Thank you was, for having me. This was a delight, and I'm going to check my library and see what else I can show you for a future episode, because this was great. This was fantastic. Thank you. I have many things to catch up on um, and more research to do. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe. It all helps the algorithm, I swear. Thanks again to Nani for being on the show. Finally, I don't want to be doing this forever. I want to get back to work. So stay safe, stay home. If you go out, wear a mask. Don't be a dick. And if you're out there scalping PlayStation 5s, seriously, cut the shit. Just support each other. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye, everyone.